My mother-in-law hates me. I've been married to my husband for four years now, and we have a six-month-old daughter named Luna. We live with my husband's mother, but it's more like living separately since we have our own house on the same property. Our privacy is relatively well-maintained, or at least it should be. My mother-in-law often comes over to our place and complains about various things, such as this house has a bad vibe, or the furniture in this house has no taste at all. I thought our life might change when Luna was born, but it didn't change at all. Act it feels like she's become even more hostile towards me and Luna. When Luna cries, my mother-in-law says, What a noisy girl. She's really noisy. I don't like girls like this. My mother-in-law actually wanted a son who could inherit the family name. She doesn't want girls in this house. It would have been a little cuter if it were a boy. Every time I hear my mother-in-law say such things, I can't help but worry that Luna might suffer. My mother-in-law hardly even looks at Luna's face, and of course, she never holds her. According to my mother-in-law, she says words that deny Luna's existence, such as, a girl with your blood is just disgusting. I wonder why you gave birth to her. Oh, this child is going to have a hard time being so ugly. It's all your fault. I can't stand her abusive words toward my daughter, not just me. So, I live a life shuttling between my mother's house and my own, suppressing my anger. My name is Emily. I worked as a section chief at the Tokyo headquarters of my uncle's company. I have a brother, and he's the president of the company. Except by chance, my brother also had a baby who was about the same age as Luna. Because of that, I got along well with my sister-in-law, and we often visited each other's homes and played together. Are you bringing Jennifer with you today, too? Yes, if it's with Luna, Jennifer will be in a good mood, too. While the child is being quiet, I might as well take this chance to vent to you again. Of course, feel free to tell me everything. I often talk to my sister-in-law about my mother-in-law. Books, or rather, I vented to her. I met my husband through my uncle's introduction. My husband was working as a salesperson at my uncle's company's Kentucky branch. He was very diligent, and my brother appreciated his work, which led to his transfer to the New York headquarters. My husband's family was in New York, so this move was also greatly welcomed by his mother. Let's just take this opportunity to have a meal together as a couple. He's a good guy, my uncle suggested, and that's how my relationship with my husband started. My husband was an only child, so he didn't have any siblings to share the burden of our mother-in-law's expectations. My husband was an only child and the heir to the family. His mother doted on him, and even now, she would eagerly welcome him home, hugging him and saying things like, Welcome back, and I cooked your favorite beans whenever he visited. Due to her intense love for her son, my mother-in-law deeply despised me and constantly spread rumors about me, accusing me of being a manipulative woman who had entrapped her son. Her mistreatment of me was relentless. I used to work when we got married, so I had a hectic life where every minute counted. When I got home, I'd often flop down on the sofa, thinking, Ah, I've made it through another day. Those moments were incredibly satisfying. However, my mother-in-law would occasionally enter our home uninvited, 
catching me off guard. Emily, what are you doing? My, how improper she would scold. I would hurriedly jump up and apologize, saying I'm sorry. I had a tough day at work, and when I got home, I just let my guard down. I had no idea you were here. My mother-in-law would respond, Your work isn't finished yet. Please clean the main house and prepare dinner. It's our son's birthday today, so be sure to buy a fruit set he likes. She had shifted all household responsibilities, including those in the main house, onto me. About a year later, I started feeling unwell quite often. My husband was concerned and told me, you should rest a bit. However, my mother-in-law didn't like that he was showing me kindness. But during this time, I had been visiting the gynecologist due to my health issues. As I had a suspicion about what might be causing them. As it turned out, my suspicion was correct. People I was overjoyed and immediately shared the news with my husband. Today when I went to the obstetrician, they told me I'm pregnant. Our baby. Really? That's amazing. I'm so happy. I'm going to be a father. My husband was overjoyed. Seeing the happiness on my husband's face made me feel full of joy too. Our baby was growing healthy, and my belly was getting bigger and bigger. Up we go. I, I even found myself giving a little cheer when getting up from a chair. My large belly was a sign of our lively child. I continued working until the very last moment, and then I decided to take maternity and parental leave. Fortunately, my company had a supportive environment for this, and my colleagues sent me off with a big bouquet and cute baby clothes. For baby clothes already? Like you're jumping the gun, but thank you everyone. I'll be taking a break for a while, but I'll come back in good spirits. So please keep my seat warm. Of course we'll be waiting for you, waiting for you, Everyone smiled as they bid me farewell. However, when I returned home carrying the bouquet, my mother-in-law was standing there with a stern expression. Emily, you're quitting your job from today, right? Actually, mother, I'm not quitting. I'm taking maternity and parental leave. We'll be back after my vacation. Can't, but you're just being careless again. Well, fine. Be sure to do the housework properly during your break. Just with that big belly of yours, it's bound to be noisy having your child around. My mother-in-law was not pleased with my pregnancy. She found it distasteful that her son had fathered a child with another woman. And the fact that it was a girl added to her discontent. Despite all this, our daughter was born healthy and strong. My husband was moved to tears, and, and I felt an overwhelming sense of joy and excitement, knowing that something more precious than my own life had come into this world. Hey, what should we name her? Yeah, I've been giving it a lot of thought. How about Luna? Hoping she'll grow up to be as beautiful as the moon. Luna, that's a lovely name. Luna, you have mommy and daddy here. During my hospital stay, my husband made time to come and hold Luna immediately. It was truly happy family time. Looking back, those three days in the hospital might have been the happiest moments of my life. When we returned home, my mother-in-law was there. I was immediately brought back to reality. Upon seeing Luna's face, my mother-in-law remarked, She's an ugly child. She doesn't look anything like my son. I wonder if this child is really his. 
are you deceiving him and having children with someone else? She said such cruel things. My husband, who was present, got angry and said, What are you saying, mom? My mother-in-law sulked and left the room. I think that was the only time my mother-in-law actually looked at Luna's face, both before and after this incident. Afterward, she stopped even bothering to look at Luna's face. SSD even after I was discharged from the hospital, I was still made to do the housework in the main house. I set up a cool bedroom for Luna to sleep in. But if I took my eyes off her for a moment, my mother-in-law would be there. What are you doing? There was gauze on Luna's face. I, t I rushed over in surprise and removed the gauze. Why would you put gauze on the face of a newborn like this? She could suffocate. Oh, it's just a developmental test. Since she's your child, I thought maybe she's a bit slow in her development, so I decided to experiment. She can't even remove the gauze by herself yet. She really is slow, such a silly child. That's obvious, isn't it? She's only just been born. What if something happened? Well, that would be her fate, wouldn't it? My mother-in-law laughed and walked away. My mother-in-law's mistreatment of Luna was terrible. She would leave Luna lying on her stomach, even though Luna couldn't turn over properly yet, and she would intentionally place small objects touch around Luna, who had just started putting things in her mouth. However, my mother-in-law showed no remorse whatsoever. Actually, wouldn't it be easier for you to get a divorce if this child wasn't around? What are you talking about? I have no intention of divorcing. Well, then hurry up and have a boy. A boy who looks like our son, unlike this ugly one. After all, this ugly one probably isn't our son's child anyway. I was reaching my boiling point. I could endure the mistreatment directed at me, but to subject innocent Luna to such treatment. How many times do I have to tell you? This child is mine and my husband's. If you can't trust me, then go ahead and do a DNA test or whatever you want. But don't harm this child. It's and cowardly and despicable to lay a hand on a defenseless baby who can't even resist yet. This is your grandchild. I don't consider her my grandchild. She's just a noisy child. Just like you. Our son was never a crybaby when he was little. If she were our son's child, she wouldn't be crying all the time. There was no point in arguing any further. I needed to create an environment where my mother-in-law and Luna couldn't interact physically to avoid any danger. With that in mind, I rarely brought Luna to the main house, and when I had no choice but to bring her, I carried her on my back to ensure she was never separated from me. Luna was about to turn one year old. I also wanted to return to work, so I had been making arrangements to enroll Luna in daycare. Today was the trial daycare day. Luna had been at daycare since the morning. It was the first time in a while that I had been separated from my own child. I wonder what it is, but it feels incredibly lonely. It was as if a gaping hole had opened up inside me. It and as if to distract myself from that loneliness, I focused on housework during that time, trying to finish cleaning and laundry in the main house. Fun. I can't see my mother-in-law anywhere. Did she go somewhere? Well, if she's out, it means I won't be subjected to her harassment, so my stress might be reduced. After finishing the chores in the main house, I picked up Luna from daycare and brought her home. 
but bite it being her first day at daycare. She seemed to be spending the time well. She seemed to be spending it with a smile. The daycare staff assured me Luna will be just fine. You can enroll her in daycare anytime. I worried for nothing. I thought that the child you didn't like would be gone and you two would get divorced. I picked up the baby immediately to check her breathing. She was breathing, but her heart seemed to be beating faster than usual. Please don't say anything unnecessary and call an ambulance right away. However, there was no response. It seemed that my mother-in-law had fled. She must have thought that staying here any longer would lead to trouble. And I felt genuine hatred for my mother-in-law, who'd attempted to kill the baby. And I was determined never to forgive her for what she had done to an innocent child. And before long, the baby was taken by ambulance, received prompt medical attention, and recovered her health. She was on the brink of dehydration. Babies are susceptible to dehydration, so please be extra careful with her, the nurse informed me. When the nurse asked me if the baby had a health record, I realized, oh, that's true. I'll contact the mother. So I made a call to the baby's mom. Meanwhile, the baby was peacefully sleeping in the bed. I couldn't help but wonder if this baby was indeed Luna. Just the thought sent shivers down my spine. How could someone do something so terrible? My anger towards my mother-in-law brasser faced, simmering beneath the surface. Thanks upon returning home, I found the baby's mother waiting. Jennifer? She hugged her child, calling her, and broke down in tears as if her knees had given way. I apologized. I'm so sorry. I let my guard down for a moment. No, it's okay. I left Jennifer with you without even asking for your schedule. I feel responsible too. Please, Emily, lift your head. You've done nothing wrong. I had no intention of actually divorcing him. It was all a ruse to get my mother-in-law to return. My mother-in-law had fallen right into the trap. Two days later, she came back home. I greeted her saying, Welcome back, S-E-L-C. Oh, you're still here? Oh, that was just a lie. She tried to leave again, but I stopped her. I have good news. The baby is doing well. Oh, really? I didn't know. Do you know who that baby is? She's my brother's daughter. My mother-in-law paused for a moment and then she retorted, So what in a defiant manner? My brother is the representative director of our company, you know? I emphasized. My mother-in-law's face turned pale. Where's my son? Well, I think he's probably at my brother's place, apologizing. She imagined her precious son apologizing, and her anger exploded. And he has nothing to do with that child. He closed the door to your son's career. My brother held your son in high regard. He was considering a promotion to section chief by the end of this year. But now, due to this incident, my brother is furious. He can't give a job to someone who doesn't even understand his own mother. No, I thought that baby was Luna. My mother-in-law took a few steps back. A killer mother-in-law, you hardly ever look directly at Luna's face. It's understandable that you could mistake her for another baby. My sister-in-law wasn't upset about it, but my brother is very angry. What will happen to my son? Even in this situation, my mother-in-law's mind was preoccupied with her son. Uh, he'll probably be fired. 
I then asked my mother-in-law. As where have you been all this time? I stayed with my friends until things cooled down. But that baby is fine now, right? She just sweated a little. I put her in the locker to help her metabolism. Maybe she'll become a healthy child because of it. My mother-in-law continued to justify her actions, saying, I can't believe they would fire my son over something like that. I'm rejecting that company. It's a place where my son's talents can't shine. A man came out of the adjacent room. It was my brother. Is that so? You rejected it? Emily, you deceived me. My mother-in-law completely changed her attitude from earlier and lowered her head to my older brother. Oh, my son has always been taken care of by you. When my mother-in-law started to apologize, my brother interjected saying, I've heard everything. Mother-in-law was trying to justify herself. It's not like that. I really thought it was Luna and it was just a mistake. I think it's something you shouldn't do to any baby. You're not apologizing to my daughter. You're just apologizing for my title. I've heard that you've treated my sister pretty badly too. What's your problem? Mother-in-law became flustered and looked down. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. So please, spare my son from being fired. He's working hard, but his wife didn't understand. Mother-in-law must have been glaring at me. My older brother didn't let that slide. My sister is a very understanding person. She's also a talented manager at work. That like seemed like something inside mother-in-law snapped. Seriously, it's all because of you, she said, pointing at me. Well, I've never really liked this marriage from the start. But so why did my son marry someone like you? He was deceived by this woman. And what's this about leaving a baby in the locker? Do you have evidence to back up such a claim? The kind of person is this? Still saying such things? The locker I happened to open just happened to have a baby inside. And that baby just happened to be your brother's child. That's all there is to it, isn't it? My son has absolutely nothing to do with this. Bringing him into this situation is just as bad on your part as it is on your brother's. You putting a baby in the coin locker was captured clearly on the security camera. First with as with that statement, my mother-in-law's confidence vanished, and she surrendered completely. The police will be here soon. The police? My mother-in-law had never thought that her actions would lead to a police investigation. She panicked. Why the police? She asked. Why you ask? Taking a child away without permission and leaving them behind are both serious crimes. You need to face the consequences. Are you saying it's okay if I get arrested? She asked. Wait, oui, where's my son? She asked. Where is he? My husband slowly came out of the room. Mom, I can't support you anymore, he said. It's just not right, it's terrible. I did it for your sake, she said. But in the end, I lost my position and trust at my company. What do you mean it was for my sake? She asked. If it were for my sake, you should have been able to love Luna, right? Both Emily and Luna are my family. You shouldn't have done anything to hurt my family, right? Mom, she said return to being your old self. As then, the police arrived, and my mother-in-law was taken away while sobbing. The you see, our home, after my mother-in-law was taken away, was filled with my husband's uncontrollable crying and my brother holding his head in his hands. But despite this, 
Luna and Jennifer were peacefully sleeping. Big brother, I'm truly sorry for this whole ordeal. Actually, even though it was mother-in-law who did it, I'm deeply sorry that Jennifer, who had nothing to do with it, had to go through such a scary experience. My brother placed his hand on my shoulder. It's okay now. Jennifer is fine, and my wife isn't blaming you at all. What about my husband's job? We can't promote him to manager, but we won't fire him. He's a capable and excellent employee. Another opportunity for promotion will come. My husband and I apologize to my brother. But, but Luna and Jennifer really look like twins, don't they? Both Luna and Jennifer, sleeping peacefully, were in the same position and facing the same direction. They were incredibly cute. I gently stroked both of their heads. I'm sorry for putting you through so much pain. How about moving from here as an opportunity, Emily? Son, I can't bear to stay with my mom any longer. Even if it's a small apartment, let's move out. I was grateful that my husband had made that decision. Thank you. Tears welled up in my eyes out of happiness. We moved to a small apartment and decided to start our lives over from scratch. Luna happily went to daycare. And my husband and I worked hard every day, dreaming of having our own home. My mother-in-law was released from custody and seemed to have returned to that house, but we never heard from her again. It seems like she was thoroughly questioned by the police. We started a new life as a family of three. One or rather, four. I was pregnant with a new life inside me. Interestingly, my brother's wife was also expecting and our due dates were the same. We laughed. <laughs>